Give life all you got. Hello, Tammy C. Walker here, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I created this channel, of course, just to provide some light and love. I'm switching it up a little bit, coming to you out of my book that changed my life several years ago. Power of the Positive Thinking. Power of Positive Thinking by Dr. Norman Vincent Hill. We have to give life all that we have. Just think about yourself. Are you truly giving life your all? Are you giving life your all with your relationships, with your family, your romantic relationship? Are you giving life your all in your job, career, finances? Are you truly giving yourself your all by protecting your peace, your mental health, by being um, very excellent with your physical health, making your doctor appointments, watching that salt intake, watching the sugar intake, eating some fruits and vegetables, and doing some exercises. What about your mental? If you're struggling with anxiety, depression. Have you tried some meditation? Have you consulted a therapist or tried some yoga or going for brisk walks? There's so many things you could do to help your mental. It, um, it's amazing to me. It really is. But coming out of the book, are you giving life your best? This is what the power of positive thinking says in my favorite chapter, expect the best and get it. A major key to success in this life, to attaining that which you deeply desire, is to be completely released and throw all of these, ooh, I can't even read, and throw all there is of yourself into your job or any project in which you are engaged in. In other words, whatever you are doing, Give it all you got. Give every bit of yourself. Hold nothing back. This is what I tell people. These are my words, but this is what I tell people. Life cannot deny itself to the person who gives life his all. The book goes on to say, but most people, unfortunately, don't do that. In fact, very few people do. And this is a tragic cause of failure. Or if not failure, it is the reason we only have attain. That book is preaching. So have you ever heard people do this? Or maybe you've done this. You see somebody very successful. You say, must be nice. Lucky them. No, 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 no. <laughs> no lucky them. Now, of course, if you inherited money or you were born into wealth, sure, we can say that. But some of these people started from the bottom. Now I'm here. Everybody that is successful, they did, they were not born with a silver spoon. Some people truly put the emphasis on sweat, blood, and tears. I'll, I'll speak on the little stuff that I've done. Now, let me not downplay it, the big stuff that I've done. You know... <sighs> Once I signed that paper for my master's degree, I already knew I was in for a ride. And it wasn't just get your master's degree. It was free internships. I had to work for free for 16 hours a week for 10 months and then for 22 hours a week for 10 months for free. You're not getting no money. And that cuts into your time where you need to be making money. So therefore, I had to jump in my car and drive Uber. I had to work 30 hours, intern for free, and attend classes. That was some crazy stuff. But I'm glad I did it because it shows what hard work and tenacity will do. It meant staying up to 2, 3 in the morning, cranking out papers. But I, I knew I wanted to graduate. I knew I had to get out of corporate I knew I wanted to be a therapist, a social worker, and that's like one of the biggest things I've done in my life besides 
getting a divorce from a toxic marriage and beating cancer twice. I definitely rank getting my master's degree up there. Not because it's a master's degree. That doesn't matter. Master's, bachelor's. It's because I took a risk and changed fields in my 40s. And also, I'm doing something I enjoy. Of course, it doesn't come without frustration. Uh, you know, I get frustrated. You know, it's tough being a therapist. It's tough listening to uh, others' problems, especially on those days when you're not feeling so well yourself. Um, but it feels good, though, at the same time to be able to give back, to help. And I think what keeps me going is humbling to have someone select me to help them. I mean, what are they saying? Like, who am I? <laughs> you know? So it's humbling that they think that I can help them. Ha ha ha. And I can. I can. Being a therapist, being a counselor, psycho psychologist, psychiatrist, all of those things. Same with a judge, police, attorney. You 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 are learning people. That's a, that's what it is. And that's why sometimes judges, if you go in their courtroom and lie, they automatically know because they talk to so many people. It's like teachers, hairstylists, all of them talk to so many people. You get to read personalities. But as a therapist, I think one of the highest things you need to be good at is listening and have empathy and compassion. Sometimes it's frustrating. It gets hard, though, because you can outwork your client. Sometimes I work too hard, and I'm like, stop, pull back, and your client needs to do, do the work. Because really, the therapist, we don't do a whole lot. It's your client that changes their life by doing the work. But what about you? What, what can you do to give life its best? Don't be a holdout. Don't, don't make up excuses. What's the most thing that people are using to stop them? What are they doing? It's fear. Fear of the unknown. And so before they even get started, let's say somebody does want to go back to school and get their bachelor's degree. Uh, I don't want those student loans. Okay, there are a lot of scholarships out there. Come again. Um, I kind of don't have a lot of time. Well, a lot of these schools have online programs. You don't even have to sit in the classroom. You also get college credits for your work that you've done in your career. So you, you never know. You might rack in nine, 12 credit hours off the bat just from your work. So a lot of this stuff is excuses. I want to start my own business, but I don't know where to start. Google, I started a life coaching business from jumping on the internet and typing in how to start a life coaching business. With Google at our fingertips, none of us should have questions. I Google anything I need, and for the most part, I always find the answer. Always. Um, sometimes it's better to just say, I'm scared. It's better to say, I haven't done whatever because I'm kind of scared to. Instead of making up excuse after excuse, I just read something. This girl was on the internet, on YouTube, via TikTok, and she was saying she tried to speak to other black women. If she's saying, but some of them snarl at her, they're not friendly. So I'm looking in the comments, here go this dang, dang on excuses. Well, you never know what somebody going through. If a lady speaks to me, I don't care about color. I'm going to speak back. It's, you know, I learned, I learned something when I was going through chemo. I would be so sick sometimes. But I have to run in the grocery store and grab, you know, just a little food. Because when you're in chemo, your taste buds are distorted. Things taste like salt. But I still have to eat something. And I would be so sick. And I would be standing there waiting on the cashier to ring me up. And I'm telling you, if I I never been so humbled in my life, I would look at that cashier and say, hello, how are you? And they were like, oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm okay. I probably wouldn't say good, but I would say I'm okay. 
But I'm not going to give this cashier an attitude because I'm in chemo. They might be in chemo too. They may be caring for a sick parent. They may be getting let go. You know, this may not, this may be their part-time job. They may not have a full-time job. So to me, to say you don't know what nobody going through, that's true, but it doesn't give you a pass to be an ass. We don't get an excuse to be rude. So we got to we gotta change how we treat others because how we treat others, that's part of how we are blessed. Um, when you treat people rude, then bad, bad stuff comes to you. Rude people going to come back to you. When you are unfriendly, <laughs> then people are going to be unfriendly to you. When you show love, love comes back. When you show empathy and compassion, somebody going to show compassion to you. Many times we are our worst enemy by that stinking thinking, thinking wrong. Be kind. Show a little love. It feels way better. It really does. Yes, every day isn't rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes we do have to get chemotherapy. But that didn't give me an excuse to be rude because I was too scared to be rude because I thought if I'm rude and nasty and hateful, this cancer is going to spread, and you don't want that. So be kind. Give life your all. Don't be a holdout. Don't be scared. I would rather sit in my rocking chair at 93, watching the sunset and say, you know what? I'm glad I went back to school and became a social worker. I'm glad I bought that guitar. I'm glad I told the one I love how I really felt. I would rather say that than to sit in that rocking chair and say, I wonder what it would have been like to go back to school and become a social worker. I wish I had bought that guitar. I wish I had told him how I really felt. I wish I had started my own business. The cemetery is a hot spot. It's filled with so much promise. The cemetery is. The writer, the dancer, the business owner. Well, they wish they should have been a business owner. They never started. The person with clothes with tags still on them. They never wore them. They passed away before they could wear this stuff. The one who stayed in the marriage where they were miserable. So many hopes and dreams are in the cemetery. Never touched those dreams. And they left this earth before they could. Don't be like that. Get out there and start today. Give life your best. Tammy Sharice Walker signing off. Have a beautiful day. God bless you all. Bye-bye.